Good morning and welcome to Daily Bible Study for Super Newbies. Today is January 19th and today we are talking about Genesis chapter 29 verses 14 to 30 on page 55 of your Life Application Study Bible NIV. Now, yesterday we talked about how Jacob had to leave home. He had to go because his brother was justifiably pretty mad. He is pretty mad and he wanted to kill, he wanted to kill Jacob. Esau wanted to kill Jacob. So Jacob was like, all right, I got it. I got to go. So he was on his way to his uncle's house, his uncle Laban, which was his mom's brother. So he's on his way to his uncle's house. And before that, yesterday we talked about he, God spoke to him in a dream. So Jacob is learning about growing his relationship with God and he's learning to talk to God and learning how to, you know, experience these messages from, from the father. So Jacob arrives at his uncle's house. Now, Uncle Laban, right? He took Jacob in and Jacob began to work for him. I mean, he's not a freeloader, right? The guy's giving him room and board and food. And Jacob's like, yeah, I'll help you out around, you know, where we're at right now. I'm gonna, gonna work for you. But Laban told Jacob, you know, just because you're my relative, I'm not going to, I'm not going to mooch off of your effort. So tell me what your price is. So back in those days, you know, uh, relatives would marry each other. So Jacob was like, Hey, I, I really like your younger daughter over there. Her name was, um, name was Rachel. So Jacob told his uncle Laban, he says, I will work for you for seven years. If you allow me to marry your younger, your younger daughter. So that was his cousin. See, back then, it wasn't such a thing about marrying into bloodlines because bloodlines hadn't been corrupted yet. So it was common practice for people to marry their cousins or other family members with the permission and blessing of the parents. So Laban, Uncle Laban was like, okay, cool. Okay, cool. Yeah, you work for me for seven years. And at the end of that seven years, I will give you my daughter's hand in marriage. Awesome. So Jacob is toiling and working, happily working for seven years because he's he's certain that at the end of the seven years of labor for his uncle, that he's gonna get married to that, you know, the beautiful younger daughter of Rachel. Seven years goes by. Seven years goes by. And on the wedding night, there's a great feast. And Uncle Laban brings out his older daughter, Leah, right? <laughs> <laughs> and tricks Jacob into marrying the older daughter. Now, I'm not really sure how he tricked him. I'm, I'm certain there's probably a veil involved, you know, during the ceremony or, okay, so <laughs> there's probably a veil involved. But the Bible says that he made love to her, to Leah, made love to the older sister and consummated that marriage. But I'm kind of like, wouldn't he see her face? So we all have questions when we read the scripture. And that's one of the questions I had when reading this was that, dude, how did you not know that you were marrying the wrong daughter? Neither here nor there. That's what the scripture says. And that's what we're going with. So he, he uh, formally certified the marriage with some lovemaking to the older daughter. And then in the morning, it says he was surprised that it was the wrong sister. Oh, okay. So you did all of that. And uh, the next day you were surprised? Bro, what? <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> Purpose is not in the details, right? So he goes to Uncle Laban and he was like, uh, so uh, you gave me the wrong sister and now I'm married to the wrong sister. Why did you do that to me? And Uncle Laban was like, it's not custom to marry, you know, the younger, younger sister without marrying the older one first. So... What it was saying is that back then, the younger sister couldn't get married until the older sister was married. I, hey, it is what it is. So he's like, if you pledge another seven years of work, I'll let you marry the younger one too. I'm kind of like, what? Oh my gosh. So Jacob, sure enough, he really wanted to be married to Rachel, the younger sister. So he pledged another seven years of servitude toward his uncle Laban and his and his farm and his and his property and such so now he has two wives but jacob didn't love leah he was madly in love with rachel but i mean okay so now he has two wives two sisters holy crap can you imagine that household <laughs> 
So what is the uh, what is the lesson for today? Because it's also a very short reading, but it's it's power packed. Karma's a hoot. How Jacob acquired his birthright from his brother was manipulative. It was a lie. He lied to his brother. And the same thing happened to Jacob when he went to his refuge at his uncle's house. His uncle deceived him, manipulated him into working for him for 14 years in order to get to the wife that he really wanted to marry. Karma's a hoot. But the lesson for today is that when others wrong you, do not plot revenge or feel sorry for yourself. Seeing things from God's perspective Perspective can't happen when we are focused on feeling sorry for ourselves or on plotting revenge. What happened to Jacob happened to him for a reason. Now, we don't know God's grander plan. I mean, we know what the promise to Jacob is, but we don't know why Jacob was meant to be there for 14 years instead of just seven. We don't know. It developed his character, probably. I mean, it got him to know uh, other people in the family more, more closely. It maybe helped him to grow in his relationship with worship towards the Father or got him to uh, to develop in his character personally because, let's face it, he was a pretty shady individual before then. He was very focused on, you know, the end justifies the means, which means how we get about getting to a certain place in life is justified by any way that we choose to do it. So Jacob had a lot of lessons to learn to become a good man any good person from the scandalous, shady, sneaky individual he once was. So this might have been what the 14 years is about. So as we are going from a place of living scandalously and in a shady way in order just to survive, sometimes we do that. Sometimes we li we have lived, past tense, lifestyles of, of living in a dark manner. And when we hear that voice, like Jacob heard the voice during his dream yesterday, we finally understand that we are meant to live a different way and to start growing our relationship with God. And in the process of God helping us to develop our character into being good people and representatives of his love towards the world, we're gonna have to go through some experiences like people lying to us and people taking advantage of us. But how we choose to react during these times is the character we're meant to grow into. So if you're in that transition phase and you are going from living a dark and dirty life, becoming on the way to becoming a good person, representative of God's love to the world, and on your way to your destiny, living in a Christ-like manner, you may go through these experiences of people taking advantage of you, of people lying to you, of people hurting you and doing things that make you feel bad. But today's lesson is to understand that we are not meant to take revenge. As hard as that might be, it is an absolute no-no to take revenge. Why is revenge a no-no? Because we're focused on making ourselves feel better at the expense of punishing someone else. It's not up to us to do that. It's not up to you to punish people who hurt you. God sees all of that. During the awful times that you experience traveling from a life of darkness into your Christ-like purpose, we are meant to focus on growing our character by choosing to react to things and troubles that we have at the, you know, at the hands of the out of the world. We are meant to choose to live in a Christ-like manner. Now you're not always going to get it perfect. No, you might make mistakes. Yes. And you might do things that you regret during this process, yes. But that's why we pick ourselves up. That's why we ask for forgiveness. That's why we pray for strength. So we can go from living in a dirty manner, in darkness, into living in the light, in a Christ-like manner. But karma is a hoot. <laughs> karma is a hoot. Jacob is getting his, let me tell you. And sometimes when we are transitioning, we might get ours too. Karma might bite us right in the behind and we're going to have to take it with a grain of salt and react to it in a Christ-like manner. So that's it for today, brothers and sisters. That's it for today. I love you. God loves you. The Holy Spirit loves you. And Jesus Christ, the Son of Man, loves you. Have a wonderful day, brothers and sisters. 
I will see you all tomorrow.